الحبيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نبدا تاخرت هذه الجلسه بسبب تاخر الجلسه السابقه We'll be starting now. We will abide by the time. That's why I allocate each panelist 15 minutes. And I hope that the panelists will abide by the time. The first speaker, the Dr. Mastoura Sahel, Juma Sahel. And she is uh, an assistant professor of economics at Abu Dhabi University. She used to work as assistant professor at the economic faculty at Al Batana University in Sudan. And she's got a master's degree from Sudan as well and a PhD in economics from the Azaim Al Azhari University in Sudan. Uh, the doctor will be talking about the food security in the GCC states uh, in light of the regional and international changes. Please, the floor is yours. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, prayers be to our Prophet Muhammad, his household, and his companion. The paper talked about uh, the food security in the GCC state in light of the international and regional changes. Uh, the first one is to do with the framework God said that you will uh, cultivate for seven years and uh, uh, eat those uh, which has been cultivated but leave some. This uh, has uh, talked about the food security and uh, the way uh, uh, it uh, is reserved and for the importance of uh, the humans uh, God said in one of the verses uh, he started with uh, uh, feeding uh, the people the importance of feeding the people and then the security this uh, issue uh, has been uh, important because of the demand and supply equation the food is not uh, an economic uh, issue per se. Uh, it has been mingled with a strategic uh, importance uh, as well. The food security resembles a challenge for the GCC countries because of the lack of uh, arable land and uh, the shortage of the rainfall, uh, especially when it comes to certain crops uh, uh, like wheat, uh, and uh, made uh, the uh, problem of uh, this study lies in the fact that uh, the provision of food is one of the most important challenges. The GCC countries uh, lacks uh, uh, the self-satisfaction when it comes to food and the yawning gap uh, thereby between the demand and supply. The capacity of production cannot cover the need and this uh, uh, necessitates uh, the import uh, mechanisms and as a result the importing uh, countries will be uh, pressurized by the productive countries and the exporting countries. This study aims at uh, first uh, to analyze uh, the lack of food in the GCC countries and the implications thereby. Secondly, to get acquainted with the food gap and the dimensions of this problem in the GCC countries, as well as to get acquainted with the implications of the food crisis on the economies of the GCC countries. The importance of this study lies in the fact that it uh, 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 discusses the food problems in the GCC countries as a part of the Arab world, and uh, uh, the, uh, the problem uh, doesn't uh, uh, relate to the economy per se, but it relates to the security and the uh, uh, social nuances as well. We have followed three uh, uh, scientific uh, uh, methodology, the deduction and the induction, and uh, uh, it depended on uh, some data from uh, uh, official sources in addition to the national statistics uh, institutions in the GCC countries. The uh, uh, second point is uh, 
to do with the follow we would like to touch upon the food security food security has uh, a number of definitions uh, because of the disparity of the opinions vis-a-vis -vis such concept but uh, people agree on the concept uh, uh, of the how and uh, it says that for the humans at all time to access uh, the food uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the nutrients that meet uh, the taste and meet the uh, needs. Uh, I would like uh, to be brief, so I'll touch upon these matters uh, quickly. The characteristics of the food uh, security in the GCC countries, the GCC countries uh, 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 has a very uh, uh, important geographic location. And uh, as you know, uh, the boom in oil has added to this important. Uh, the GCC countries is the pillar or the linchpin of the oil markets, uh, and thus uh, they have reached the surplus, and thus development, uh, and uh, indeed uh, the commercial circle has been expanding since the oil boom. The status of uh, food uh, in the GCC countries, uh, the uh, production of food in the GCC uh, countries, in order to understand the production of uh, food, we have uh, this table between 2004-2011, the uh, commodities uh, uh, production have uh, 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 increased. Uh, but uh, there was a shortage in the production of potatoes by 30 percent, the vegetables increased by 53 percent, the fruit uh, increased by 10 percent, meat increased also by 6 percent, as well as fish by 1 percent, and the uh, 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 production, the total production of the commodities have uh, decreased. Uh, uh, it was 12.4 million ton in 2008-2004, and uh, it has become 12 million ton in 2014. This uh, slide or this uh, table uh, uh, explains uh, the aforesaid information when it comes to the uh, food imports in the GCC countries. The status of uh, the production of food has led to the dependency on some of the imports uh, from. Uh, 26.9 million ton, uh, the cost uh, uh, to the tune of 13 billion dollars in 2014 by 2018, and it has become 32.55 million ton, uh, and the cost is uh, 25 billion dollars, and the increase was to the tune of 21% of the quantity. The report uh, shows that uh, the imports has increased by 4.6 percent between 2011-2015, and it's envisaged that uh, it will reach 35.1 billion dollars by 2020. And the size of the consumption of the GCC countries from food will reach 51.5 million ton annually during that period. The food gap in the GCC countries. Uh, the GCC countries suffer from uh, a food gap exponentially. In 1985, uh, it amounted to $3.94 billion. It has increased to $4 billion in 1990, and then $4.4 .4 in 1995, and then it increased uh, to $5.53 billion in 2000. And 7.8 in 2005 and 8.4 billion dollars in 2006 and then 12 billion dollars in 2010 and lastly 23.5 billion in 2012. The contribution of the GCC countries in plugging this gap, this table uh, uh, shows the, the contribution of the GCC as uh, in comparison to the gap in the other Arab countries. We can notice from this table that Saudi Arabia 
uh, contributes to the tune of 21.34% of the gap, and then the Emirates in the second rank, and then Kuwait, the Saudi, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates uh, contribute to the tune of 40% of the uh, total size of the food value or the food gap as an average mean between 2010 and 2012. And the contribution of the GCC countries as a whole resembles 49% uh, from the total contribution of the other Arab countries. The implications of uh, 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 this shortage of, of food or this uh, food gap, there are indeed severe implications, especially when the commodities uh, price uh, 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 increases. Uh, some of the implications are to do with the with the GCC countries being prone to inflationary pressures, especially when they import the commodities from countries where the currency uh, is more uh, solid than the currency dealt with in the GCC countries as well as uh, the uh, uh, inflation. This will affect uh, the decision makers uh, when it comes to investment because of the uncertainty uh, 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 that uh, the inflation uh, entails. For the food shortage, uh, there are a number of implications. The food shortage has economic uh, implications that relate to the waste of the resources, and it resembles a burden, and it uh, harms uh, the development. It has also a social and security implications that might uh, underestimate the stability and might obstruct the development. Food has uh, a political price as well, and we have a number of uh, examples uh, whereby the commodity can resemble a tool of pressure by certain countries. In terms of this study's uh, outcomes, the outcomes are as follows. Uh, the food crisis uh, is uh, ubiquitous. It is international by its nature. And uh, the uh, uh, economic crisis has left uh, a food crisis, indeed, as an implication from the 2008 uh, uh, crisis. And uh, the issue of uh, meeting the food security in the GCC has resembled a structural challenge that uh, has been faced uh, in the GCC, especially or in light of uh, the problems of the lack of the arable land, as well as the shortage of the rainfall, as well as the inflation. Some of the outcomes as well relate to uh, having a food gap, indeed a yawning gap, because every single GCC country is a pure importer of the food, and the population uh, has been increasing, as we know, and uh, this will uh, obstruct the increase of the production uh, and uh, increases the dependency on the imports. Uh, the uh, side of the uh, gap in the GCC country has been uh, expanding, and the percentage of the self-satisfaction vis-a-vis the other corps is being increased as well. The GCC countries have been affected by a number of uh, elements that are important. Uh, the uh, inflation in the population, uh, the fluctuation of the commodities price, uh, uh, and uh, as well as the risks of the climate change uh, and the forestation, uh, the droughts. Despite the fact that uh, the GCC countries have exerted certain uh, efforts to bridge this gap, but these efforts are not up to the standards and do not conform with the size of the crisis. Our recommendation, there are a number of recommendations. First, uh, the recommendation of uh, emphasizing the sustainable production, uh, as well as uh, uh, to uh, uh, look for uh, emphasizing the promising uh, production capabilities whereby the GCC has been successful, like uh, 
the uh, poultry production, for example, and in fish production. When it comes to uh, 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 exports, I have a number of uh, recommendations. The GST countries uh, ought uh, to follow the joint pricing procedures and to establish certain uh, uh, agglomerates in order to negotiate with the main uh, uh, sources of uh, exporters in order to get the supply unfettered. And when it comes to the consumption, we uh, need uh, to uh, emphasize uh, uh, perhaps uh, uh, to, uh, to, to lay off uh, the exaggeration in the consumption and to raise the awareness vis-a-vis uh, -vis the pattern of consumption in conformity with the needs of the market and to work on uh, alleviating the waste, especially when it comes to water. When it comes to uh, scientific research, we have to uh, 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 exert efforts uh, uh, to uh, increase the production in the land uh, in order to use some of the water uh, and, uh, and to uh, plant uh, a certain plants that conform with the uh, uh, environment and to have a legislation framework in order to keep the pace with, with the uh, world's uh, 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 procedures and uh, to lift the uh, limitations on the capital flow. When it comes to the uh, foreign investments, we need to have uh, frameworks uh, for the investment agreements in order to have an arbitration procedure if uh, the conflicts uh, are raised. When it comes to the strategic procedures and agreements, uh, to adopt uh, a GCC unified strategy that relates to the uh, joint destiny and to seek uh, the agriculture integration and uh, the food production also to have in place uh, a Gulf agency for food and security for putting the plans uh, in this domain. Thank you very much for your listening and peace be upon you. Thank you for the doctor. The second speaker is Dr. Mohammed Fahd al Rashid. Dr. Mohammed Fahd al Rashid he is the CEO of the Water Research Center at the Kuwait University. And uh, he uh, also was a member of an Asian association for water. And he has uh, uh, published and uh, edited 30 scientific papers and report in addition to a number of books that he co authored. He has received a master's degree from the London University in 1993 and a PhD in 2008. The gentleman will be talking about uh, the water security as a chief priority for the GCC countries. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you, in the name of God, the most gracious, most merciful. Prayers be to our Prophet Muhammad, his household and companion. A very good morning to you. Please, I need help to showcase the slides, please. Allah says, and we have made everything from water. At the outset, I would like uh, to talk about the priority of the water security in the GCC countries. And uh, as you know, this is very important because our land lacks water. I would like uh, to talk uh, uh, as a prelude I would like to talk about the water security. There is a special definition in the GCC countries, the uh, 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 water security. Uh, and I'll be talking about the components of emphasizing the water security and the triangle that deals with the water security, uh, energy security, and the food security. And then I'll be talking about certain challenges as well as having a roadmap. I'd like to give you a, a general view about the uh, sources of water. We have the desalination source, the sea water. It is very sensitive and very strategic and uh, 
it represents uh, 95 percent of uh, the drinkable water potable water there's also the underground water it is the only natural uh, uh, source that we depend on in agriculture cultivation it is very important as you know uh, and the third one it is the uh, water treated uh, source uh, uh, it relates to the consumption the more consumption the more water is treated uh, it is uh, uh, dual and quadruple kind of uh, uh, treatment the quadruple treatment uh, might uh, uh, lead to having potable water as well this takes place in Kuwait and it has uh, the uh, 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 biggest uh, plant of uh, treating water and it has uh, the production of uh, 400,000 uh, cubic meter a day. The, uh, uh, the water uh, security is to do with the capacity of the government to uh, uh, provide the sustainability of having portable water to the consumers in order for the health to be emphasized to have uh, a productive society with the least uh, threats the GCC uh, depends mainly on the desalination and that's why the water security definition is a bit different and that's why I said uh, there is a special definition it is the reassurance of the continuity of having a portable water and to have a strategic stockpile of such water for the future years because we do not have uh, uh, lakes we do not have rivers and that's why the reserve is very important uh, we need to have uh, uh, an infrastructure whereby the water is produced uh, is stockpiled and rationalized where it is used and then can be treated as i say all the gcc countries uh, do treat the water uh, to the tune of 30 to 60 percent 50 percent uh, of this water goes to sea after it has been treated as well because we need every single drop of water as you know the second uh, the third part is to do with having uh, uh, national capacities that lead to the continuity of such structure uh, the uh, food security is difficult and easy at the same time it is uh, a prerequisite for the advancement of the world. Uh, some countries have the capacity of uh, reaching the water security, but uh, it was not there because of the lack of the plans and decision-making procedures. Some of the countries do not possess such uh, capabilities, but they reached uh, the food, uh, or sorry, the water security because they needed such uh, 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 important issue. There are issues that are demographic, uh, there are also issues that relate to climate change as well as the pollution element uh, as well as the droughts. <coughs> also, the security of water sources for the Gulf countries. The, we can look at this from two points of view, one national, local, the other regional. And... Uh, also, groundwater, for example, no, no national borders. They can be underground in different countries. So we should take it as one source. And also, the fact that all Gulf countries rely on desalination as the number one source for fresh water and water consumption requires uh, close coordination of uh, policies towards uh, securing uh, water uh, sources. We hope uh, uh, the studies uh, which have been undertaken can be taken into consideration and help uh, governments to uh, chart the sort of policies. And as you see from the Arabic chart, the numbers are slightly distorted, uh, but uh, nonetheless, uh, the, the scarcity of the water resources, the diversity in social and economic conditions, uh, 
and uh, also the development of uh, an advanced infrastructure to manage the water resources relying on uh, outside expertise is not a good policy. You must rely on our internal uh, capacity and uh, we know that the climatic uh, conditions and, are, and the pollution are important factors. Uh, at the same time, uh, uh, food security and energy security are important uh, pillars for national security for any country because uh, water, food, and uh, energy nexus is the most important uh, aspect of uh, this. Now, at the world level, this uh, the water, food, and energy nexus is strategically dealt with by all countries as one unit. Some successful examples of this United States of uh, America since uh, its foundation, they had a vision that water uh, uh, resources can unify the country or can cause its, uh, its disintegration. They set a chart, at a chart for the future. They set uh, aims and conditions to provide water resources, electricity, to deal with floods. And of course, water was an important means of transportation also, like the area canal between Buffalo and New York uh, saved a lot of money otherwise uh, spent on air cargo and uh, also because uh, the United States uh, since 1933 onwards uh, has uh, done tremendous amount of work and investment something in the region of $200 billion in building dams, which uh, generated a revenue of $700 billion uh, in return. Of course, $200 billion is a huge amount of capital, but also the reward uh, is very hard, and the returns are, are very hard. And, uh, in the beginning, it may be very costly, but ultimately it will have huge benefits for the country. And this kind of wise policies uh, have increased the reserve per capita to 6,000 cubic meters. And, and the GCC is about 150, so you can easily see the difference. For Japan, also, water is an important part of the culture and the religious belief. Before the economic boom, uh, the Japan's losses due to floods was around 10% of the national income of the country. From 1975, uh, from 1950, sorry, uh, 1,975 trillion yens have been spent. There are some social challenges, and this means that uh, people should be more aware and uh, to and also to use virtual water, especially in agriculture, and this should be included in any policy. Of course. Uh, this will be resisted by the farmers' lobbies because this will directly impact uh, their income and uh, living standards. Of course, there are uh, economic challenges which require building a proper uh, infrastructure, which requires a lot of capital and uh, 
the towns will be many years later. Also, there may be resistance from other neighboring countries, but uh, an infrastructure of this sort should be built. Uh, and uh, uh, an example of this is the project, the proposed project uh, of the joint uh, desalination uh, plants in uh, Oman to feed the other, the other countries uh, which uh, have no shores on the Red Sea. And uh, this will may deal with the question of pollution and increase uh, cooperation between the GCC countries. Finally, a road map for water security for the Gulf countries. This requires a certain framework of policies like uh, pricing, like uh, also the what some some uh, Gulf research centers like our center in Kuwait and others have shown through their research that uh, there are some uh, advances in technology which can save water and increase uh, the quality of desalinated water. We have to remember, though, that uh, a country like Kuwait has no strategy uh, for uh, uh, to do with water security, unlike Saudi Arabia and the UAE. We also require more transparency when it comes to information and data available, and uh, we must involve uh, other disciplines uh, like sociologists, engineers, etc. We have to provide a strategic reserve of fresh water from groundwater and other sources. And some of the methods which are currently used in the UAE and Kuwait is, is to store water and ground uh, uh, water sources and others. And uh, uh, this does not require uh, large area surfaces. And uh, the consumption used should be according to a certain schedule and timetable, which takes into account the needs of each country. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Mohammed Fahad Al Rashid, for this uh, this uh, presentation. I think it will generate uh, a lot of comment and questions. Our third presenter is Dr. Walid Zibari. He is not with us. Dr. Zibari. Uh, lectures at the Gulf University in Bahrain, and the also uh, coordinator for the UN program on water sources. He has a PhD from Colorado University and is a consultant for ESCO, UNESCO, and other international organizations. Uh, Mr. Nairouz Satik will deliver his paper on his behalf. Uh, may the blessings of God be upon you all. Now that Dr. Muhammad Fahad Al Rashid has analyzed the situation in Gulf countries and made comparisons with other countries and alluded to the challenges and opportunities comes the paper by Dr. Zibari to talk about future prospects. Dr. Zubari's paper is entitled Future Scenarios for Gulf Countries, a complete perspective. The importance of this paper comes from the fact that it discusses the 
water security issues as uh, one of the policies uh, alongside uh, social, economic, and environmental policies, and it does not uh, deal with this issue in isolation from other issues. Dr. Walid followed uh, a methodology of presenting different scenarios as for the future prospects and future planning for the water security issues based on variables and the changes experienced by this area like demographic and economic development, social economic policies, environmental policies, the role of the private sector, the role of uh, the civil society organizations, the increased awareness of environmental issues. One of the most important methodologies adopted in this regard is uh, the one which uh, assesses the environmental conditions and, uh, to, and, and looks far ahead into the future to see what kind of future do we want for ourselves and our future generations and what will happen if we continue on the same with the same policies currently followed and adopted by our countries the scenarios are, are can be defined as alternatives for the future they are not projections they just describe the, an alternative picture for the future based on different visions and projections with the possible impact on the environment depending on variables like economic development and demographic development. Dr. Zibari proposes four different scenarios. The fourth one is the best, in his opinion, to guarantee water security. Uh, he alludes to the different possibilities arising from different uh, scenarios. The first scenario, which he calls uh, markets first, and in it uh, he imagines uh, development uh, being dependent on market forces, globalization, where the markets develop naturally and slowly without any surprises, and leave the question of environmental issues to the natural forces. This will lead to the gap widening between the different classes and the retreat of the middle classes. And it also supposes that the private sector will be engaged in a close alliance with the public sector and lifting some of the restraints in order to attract foreign investment and increase services by way of privatizations. And this will include important sectors like the water sector, the supply chain. And this will enhance the efficiency on the one hand, but will lead to an increasing in the cost and prices, which will negatively impact those with limited sources of impact with possible adverse uh, effects on the security of the country. It may also lead to additional pressures on the environment because uh, the natural and traditional water resources are limited and the increase in the population is very high as a result of importing foreign labor to keep up with the rapid economic development and the lack of proper policies to train local uh, 
population. This will mean that uh, per capita, the share of uh, 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 will be reduced to 300 cubic meters to reach very low levels, which will mean abject poverty in terms of water resources. In a nutshell, this scenario will will result in increasing pollution, and that in turn will have a negative impact on humans and the environment, which will also have a negative effect on investment and caring for the environment. The second uh, uh, scenario supposes strong and active intervention by governments to achieve a higher degree of social justice and more protection for the environment and will, base, will be based on a policy of reform and the societies in this part of the world changing into industrialized societies but at the same time the negative impact will be less because uh, the governments of the area will uh, integrate uh, social and economic policies with uh, policies for development and in protecting the environment with new legislations to protect the environment and encourage the private sector to participate in economic development but privatization will be done through publicly owned companies with the citizens having a share or shares in them. This scenario is based on constitutional democracy being an established norm and with accountability and transparency and the participation of civil society organizations in a way which will mean uh, the citizens sharing in the, pro in the policy making processes. This will in turn enhance uh, the environmental institutions and their role in the decision making process. At the regional level, there will be more and closer cooperation between the Gulf countries and also between the ministries of the environment and the regional organizations too. In this scenario, the countries of the region will expedite uh, integration between the GCC countries and which will result ultimately in the birth of one economic block with enhanced cooperation with this Arab environment and this will result in a free zone, economic zone at the Arab countries level with close cooperation in human resources, economic development, social, culture, etc., which will result in lessening the tension in the area, although relations with the outside world may still be tense. This scenario will take into consideration the scarcity of water resources uh, this will mean uh, an increase in demand for desalinated water and also to tackle financial uh, problems and more caution in using and consuming water resources and higher standards when it comes to protecting the environment. Uh, as for the coastal uh, areas, there should be uh, more and closer coordination and development of uh, strategies aimed at protecting these areas uh, with complete plans at the administrative level to protect the, the maritime resources and the fishing areas. This scenario will 
this scenario in supposes lesser environmental damage, pollution, because uh, environmental issues will be higher on the list of priorities. Although the deficiency in investment economically will continue. The third uh, scenario supposes, uh, uh, it's, it's in fact, it uh, totally contradicts uh, the second scenario. It will be one based on an increase in the level of uh, tension, increase, an increase in conflict, uh, and uh, social and economic strife, security issues, and uh, this scenario is uh, totally opposing the previous scenario at all levels, at the economic, political, and other levels, and it will negatively impact uh, uh, close coordination. I will not take too much time. I think you know that it's based on everything being uh, negative. The fourth scenario based on sustainability first, and it uh, can be set apart from the three previous ones which uh, st base uh, their vision on the present and expand it into the future. This scenario employs an approach of retrospective look it starts from the future and works its way backwards into the present based on a balance between uh, social justice, economic development, and environmental sustainability, and based on setting uh, social and economic uh, aims to guarantee a high standard of uh, prosperity and employs comprehensive thinking and planning to implement it based an approach based on uh, transparency and uh, also conserving energy adopting green policies and an increased level of governance and increased cooperation between the private sector, the civil society, and a higher standard of awareness level of environmental issues and issues of the environment and human health occupy more important spaces in the thinking of the government. At the political level, uh, cooperation and integration between GCC countries will reach its highest level according to the scenario to form a united Arab Gulf uh, uh, states or country with complete integration between them and ultimately a confederation with other Arab countries resulting in a very strong economic bloc made up of uh, Gulf and other Arab countries able to withstand foreign intervention and closely influencing international politics uh, and producing a very good model for uh, economic uh, prosperity and a very good uh, standard of environmental policies, protecting the environment, achieving prosperity, protecting human health, and also the countries of the region, according to this scenario, will possess uh, capabilities of desalinating water, investing hugely on infrastructure, uh, our research and development, in conclusion, this scenario will see moderate economic growth, less than the other scenarios, but uh, with more uh, with a, the, the just distribution of uh, wealth and uh, better results on uh, 
on, on the national GDP. Dr. Walid says in his conclusion that uh, one of the most important uh, lessons learned from these scenarios uh, that investment in environmental issues, uh, better governance, more transparency, more integration between Gulf and other Arab countries are the best policy on the long and arduous journey toward development and relying on the markets only is not likely to achieve uh, these aims. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thank you very much for Mr. Nairouz, the researcher at the Arab Center for Research and Policy Studies. It is actually a long paper and he wasn't specialized in this uh, matter, but uh, he read it and uh, he uh, uh, quoted and his quotations were successful. This session discusses three affairs that are extremely important, i.e. food, water and environment. And I do think that uh, these three components resemble the uh, resemble the importance of uh, what's taking place, especially that the Arab land is here, and uh, it is uh, important that the protection of uh, they're not hearing us. Why they're not hearing us? There will be. Uh, can you hear him? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Can you hear the interpreter? No. Waste management and uh, this indeed represents. Uh, I'll open the floor for the questions and answers, and we have uh, half an hour for the questions and answers, and I hope uh, that uh, you abide by the time, three minutes each. Hello, sound check, sound check, sound check, sound check. Can you hear me? Sound check, sound check, sound check. Good? Yeah, okay. Okay. We do apologize for the technical trouble. Uh, okay, go ahead. Mahmoud Murad from the Lebanese University. At the outset, uh, Mr. Chairman, I do agree with you totally. The uh, themes are extremely important, and I would like to start with my uh, humble intervention. I would like to commend uh, Dr. Mastoura's paper. She has started with a verse of the Quran, and it says uh, in Joseph's verse, this verse talks about cultivation, agriculture, and planting diligently continuously and uh, cultivation is a very important uh, issue when it comes to looking at agriculture from the scientific point of view it is not that it doesn't suffice to have the raw materials or the cups and so on and so forth but we need to look in the future and uh, have the cultivation be based on science the other question is to do with the local production is it enough it is not enough and you have alluded to the fact that uh, there are increases in the imports uh, of uh, production i wish that you have talked about the production gap or the purchases of commodities from abroad the imports and the other variable that uh, relates to the inhabitants of these land because in 2020 we will be having 31 million working force and 22 million expatriates so there is 
a production gap. There is a food gap because there are plenty of people we have witnessed and we are witnessing influx of people. As you know, the water is in shortage. We have uh, the oasis of Taif in Saudi Arabia and Oman, and that's it. So I do think, because I'm specialized in these matters, I do think that we need to have a study, a time series to understand the relationship between the production and the food import as well as the demographic element. We do understand that the Gulf is wealthy and they buy their food from abroad, but this is not enough. Tomorrow, the people where I get my commodities from might stop providing me with such commodities. So we need to shake off the limitations and the restraints of the other countries. It is not enough to have the money and the funds, but we need to cultivate and we need to take heed of uh, agriculture. There is uh, the Global Hunger Index, and this index is uh, very well advanced in the Gulf countries. It talks about nutrition and talks about uh, the uh, uh, infant mortalities and so on and so forth. Uh, it is good in the GCC, but if you go to Bangladesh, Sudan, and Somalia, this index will be very high. And that's why it is very important to uh, listen to Mr. Ar Rashid. Please, the time, please, the time is up. I just would like to say that the uh, solution lies in the Arab Gulf states. Thank you. I have four uh, quick points uh, to Dr. Mustura. Uh, the, question, the first question is uh, as follows. Do we have the capacities uh, uh, to uh, bridge the gap? Do we have the capabilities of bridging this gap in the GCC countries? The other point, the food problem, I think, relates to some of the conduct of uh, the culture, I mean, the mean average of uh, consuming water in this uh, land, is it lesser than the uh, international average or is it higher than that? The other point is uh, that uh, there is uh, a relation between the production and the cost. Uh, and uh, we have witnessed this in uh, Egypt. Sometimes uh, the imports uh, 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 cost is lesser than the uh, 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 the production cost uh, locally. Have you talked about this matter? And the idea that you have uh, uh, floated the union between the Gulf countries in order to standardize the uh, production capabilities, I think that uh, the uh, political relationship between uh, the Gulf uh, countries and uh, the, the exporting countries might play a major role, and it does play a major role. So, if the politics uh, is unified, uh, can we witness successful kind of policies? Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Abdel Nasser Al Mudda from Yemen. As a matter of fact, the footfall is uh, humble, but the papers were excellent. And uh, I personally derived great benefit from uh, Dr. Muhammad's paper and the uh, ladies' uh, uh, paper. I come from Yemen, and as you know, Yemen is uh, suffused with. Uh, problems, especially when it comes to the shortage of water. Sana'a, the inhabitants of which is uh, 3 million uh, uh, people, uh, the depth of the underwater has reached more than 1,000 meters, and uh, it is susceptible uh, of uh, 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 not having an underground water within decades, and there are no policies to solve this problem, because it is an existential problem, not an ordinary one. In Taz, the third uh, city in Yemen, the water reaches uh, the inhabitants eight 
times a year eight times a year that means one time every one and a half months despite the fact that the rainfall in Yemen in accordance with some statistics amounts to 30 to 60 billion cubic meter annually well, despite this fact the ebb governorate the rainfall to the tune of 12 billion cubic meters they are resorting to desalination so there are some mismanagements of the water itself and Mr. Muhammad has alluded to the fact that storing water in the underground basins I just want to clarify this matter because as I said sometimes in Yemen uh, we have uh, uh, areas that uh, uh, the rain falls on it uh, very uh, excessively but they resort to desalination as well so what's the point My intervention uh, will be in the form of two questions and, and some uh, comments. When it comes to Mr. Muhammad, he has talked about the future of water. My question is, what is the future of the water security in line of the current challenges? And the gentleman has talked about the underwater as the main source and the gentleman has talked about Yemen I'll talk about Algeria Algeria as you know has plentiful of resources but this strategy is not optimum of tapping into these resources we have uh, a dam in the northeast of uh, uh, Algeria it provides water for more than six uh, provinces and it has the capacity to provide water for nine provinces but there is a waste uh, of uh, water and there is no optimum tapping into it uh, so the strategy is lacking and the plans are not up to the standards the other point the uh, doctor Mastura talked about the future of food security and the gentleman has talked about uh, the uh, 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 harsh weather in the Gulf the question is would it be possible to use the land especially when we have surpluses in the Gulf uh, would it be possible for Sudan uh, to be exploited or used uh, 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 in the investment of uh, uh, the uh, uh, GCC countries as, you, as we know the Sudan resembles the basket the food basket of the Arab world why can't we emphasize uh, this uh, direction and why don't we invest in other Arab countries uh, in order to plug uh, uh, this gap indeed these surpluses might uh, uh, might be considered uh, uh, as a, a great tool for investment in the other Arab countries thank you upon you thank you for your papers the research uh, was splendid uh, I would like to talk about the role of the civil societies I always say that uh, these researches uh, uh, do the people in the Arab world take heed of them uh, the governments do they take heed of them uh, the civil societies uh, Do they play a role in uh, rationalizing the consumption and do they pressurize the government uh, uh, to lay off perhaps the narrow-minded security and look for different uh, solutions? Uh, uh, my question is, uh, do the institutions uh, derive benefit from such researches? I would like also to ask about uh, the concept that you have talked about the distribution of wealth in a just way can you illustrate more on this concept and lastly I would like to understand the idea that the doctor has talked about the USA and how it paid 
huge amount of money. Uh, this amount of money uh, have turned into an added value. Uh, would it be possible to understand uh, this kind of precautionary measures whereby you pay huge amounts of money now and you reap the benefits on the long run? Can we have the hindsight in our policies and plans uh, rather than uh, not have them? Thank you very much. I'll allow only one more question. If there are any questions, yes. upon you, Allah's Messiah and His mercy, Dr. Dabi Al-Saliti, I'm a researcher and a social activist. And I also would like to thank you, thank the panelists for discussing these matters. They are indeed very important. I have a comment to make when it comes to the last uh, uh, scenario. The researcher talked about four scenarios. The first scenario is to do with markets first. The second is to amend the policies. The third is security first. And the fourth is sustainability first. In light uh, to the fact that uh, the nature of the GCC uh, countries, I do see that uh, we can integrate the, the two scenarios. The, the second, that means to amend policies or to reform the policies and the fourth or the third one that uh, tackles the issue of sustainability because they conform to the nature of the GCC countries by combining such two examples the two scenarios we can include the socio-economic issues and the environment whereby justice can be entrenched and democracy can be pursued. So I do think that these two scenarios are very important. These scenarios, future scenarios are very important and they conform to the reality and the nature of the Gulf states. Thank you. Thank you very much. I allow uh, the panelists to comment on uh, whatever they wish to comment on. Dr. Mastoura. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. In terms of the, the questions, uh, I hope to answer them. Uh, hopefully, the, the first question by Mr. Mahmoud, Dr. Mahmoud Murad. Mr. Mahmoud Murad asked about the time series. I talked about uh, the gap between 2004 and 2011, and I had a table in numbers. Uh, it, it was there, the time series, and also uh, I had a table about the uh, uh, advancement of production as well as the food uh, security and uh, food, food self-sufficiency. Dr. Mahmoud as well said that uh, it was more judicious uh, to resort to the hun hunger index and here, I would like to say that we can't mix concept together. We need to differentiate between three concepts, uh, the food uh, 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 security and the uh, nutrient-related concepts. And uh, if I would like to talk about nutrition, then I can resort to the hunger index uh, whereby it is to do with the number of the calories uh, a person can, re can, can receive uh, a day so that he or she can be active. But my study is uh, totally different. We uh, are talking about food security. F food security relates to having food in any time and in any place uh, regardless of uh, the financial capability or uh, nutrition related culture and whereby these uh, uh, kind of uh, types of food would match their taste and their need. So these are two separate issues. Also the gentleman has uh, commented on uh, the following. Why didn't I resort to time 
series uh, data. I have uh, followed the uh, descriptive analysis as well as induction and deduction methods uh, of uh, uh, research. Uh, in order to follow what you said, uh, I needed to resort to the quantitative analysis, but my study uh, conformed to the descriptive analysis. There's also a question that relates to the production of cost that might supersede uh, the import's cost. Indeed, but we need to compare the two. We need to compare the import's cost with the export's cost. Uh, the import's cost uh, might entail certain challenges whereby the export countries uh, 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 become susceptible of risks. The first risk is uh, to be perhaps sometimes subservient to the uh, policies of the uh, country where a given country uh, imports uh, goods or commodities from. And th this uh, took place. Uh, this uh, took place in Russia. Russia has stopped uh, uh, the production of wheat uh, because it needed it for the internal consumption. India and Pakistan as well did the same with rice in 2008. They stopped exporting uh, rice. And there's also another question. Why uh, we did not resort to uh, agriculture in uh, the countries that uh, have com comparative advantage in their natural resources. I have touched upon this matter, and I said that the uh, GCC countries can reach uh, food security, and they had uh, uh, exerted efforts, and they indeed uh, reached out to the others. And uh, as you know, the paper is before you, and they uh, directed their efforts to Sudan and Africa, and Africa and Sudan uh, 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 top the scale and then Pakistan was ranked second in the Gulf investments and I have uh, uh, put the numbers in detail and the number of uh, investments and the number of acres uh, that were uh, 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 resembled or the, the lion's share uh, in Sudan when it comes to the investments of the Gulf. The other question is to do with the capabilities to uh, plot this gap. We can say that the GCC countries uh, have a comparative uh, advantage in uh, producing a number of goods uh, like uh, fisheries, uh, 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 poultry, and uh, uh, yogurt-related goods. Uh, they can indeed uh, uh, resort to the commercial exchange principle whereby they can uh, compete with other uh, countries because ha because they have the uh, comparative advantage. These capabilities can be uh, uh, enhanced uh, if uh, the uh, economy uh, has become if, if the economy becomes uh, uh, productive rather than being rentier, and uh, uh, indeed uh, it will depend on certain components whereby they can depend on different sources of uh, income uh, the GCC countries can think of their untapped uh, 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 resources they can be tapped into in order to complement the oil. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll uh, pass the floor to Mr. Mohammed Fahd Al rashid I'll allocate five minutes to the gentleman because he and Dr. Mastura are the two experts here. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. Uh, the gentleman from Yemen has posed a question. Uh, Yemen, indeed, uh, they had the uh, water strategy. They were at the forefront of laying out this strategy, and it was a good strategy. But I think the roadmap for the GCC countries uh, 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 ought to be uh, 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 orchestrated and implemented rather than being in the rather than being put on the shelves uh, this is very important and uh, we need to pursue such a, 
uh, objectives. The second point uh, from Yemen, they talked about the storage of underground water. If we had basins uh, 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 that uh, are close to the sea, we need to look at the logistic kind of uh, 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 component because you will be digging wells and you need to understand the technology first. Uh, you need to understand the location if uh, the uh, 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 basin is uh, not away from the sea, then uh, this location will be appropriate and uh, uh, perhaps uh, the water structure is very important as well. Uh, uh, the, water, the water doesn't have to be fresh or portable. We use uh, the barrier between the ship uh, water and the water in the uh, uh, reservoir. Uh, so this is a technology that we follow in the Gulf, uh, uh, what we call the brackish water. Sometimes uh, 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 the, the reservoir ought to be also depleted uh, to have the brackish water uh, uh, come into the reservoir as well as uh, uh, not having a, a reaction because sometimes uh, dolomite uh, uh, resembles the reaction between the fresh water or the portable water and the brackish water and this will uh, lessen the freshness of the water so the reservoir uh, uh, ought to uh, be located very judicious, judiciously and uh, uh, these are some elements that ought to be taken into consideration the gentleman from Algeria talked about the future of water in light of the current challenges. As we know, water is a part of economics, a part of politics, and they are intertwined. Uh, so it is a part and parcel of the system, the political system, the economic system of the Gulf state, uh, as well as the energy, indeed, because our economy, as you know, depends on the energy, and the energy uh, produces water. In some countries, uh, it is the other way around. Water produces energy. So we need to look at this uh, triangle, water, food, and energy. Uh, uh, and there's also another question that relates to the lack of strategy in Algeria. I do not have uh, an information about that. Kuwait, for example, doesn't have a strategy, a water strategy, and a number of countries do not have uh, such uh, strategies. Uh, in Cairo, we had a meeting and the representative of the Arab League was there and uh, uh, there is a plan to have a joint strategy vis-a-vis -vis water in the Arab world and this will compel all the Arab worlds to have their own strategies. Uh, this is uh, on the run and uh, the project uh, stretches to cover one year and it will start in January, God willing. Uh, the sister asked about the uh, role of the civil societies, uh, uh, who benefits from such researches uh, at the uh, uh, Kuwait uh, uh, Center for Research. Uh, we provide the researches uh, to the government. We are an advisory kind of uh, 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 center. For example, in Kuwait, and the number of uh, uh, a state, uh, there is a problem of uh, the increase of the levels of the underground water in some of the residential areas. So we had the pilot scheme and we had sensors in place uh, uh, so that uh, the uh, uh, project will be sound. So the project was successful and the government applied it to other areas. So we an advisory kind of center, we provide uh, the advice uh, uh, for the government and the researchers for the government. And we have another role. The, we have symposiums, workshops that we hold, uh, 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 and we invite the civil societies, and we raise the awareness uh, uh, amongst the populace, uh, as well as the farmers, because as you know, agriculture uh, sucks off the 80% uh, uh, of the water resources. Uh, this is very important as well as uh, 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 training courses of the technologies of desalination and so on and so forth. The United States uh, 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 follows a long-term strategy. Uh, this is very important. They plan for 30 years ahead, 50 years ahead, and that's why the strategies pour into the benefit of the populace. We have talked about the number. We, they uh, uh, had an investment of 200 billion, and the revenues were 700 billion. Uh, uh, so we have to look 
uh, for strategies that are long term indeed the uh, for the second lady who talked about she asked she, she asked a question to dr walid but and she talked about the uh, two scenarios uh, the first sustainability first or reforms first they are a bit similar but there is one uh, uh, difference so we have to put a policy in place uh, uh, that's what the scenario the first scenario says the second scenario is to it talks about the uh, uh, the the, the uh, uh, social justice and the intervention of the government. There are indeed similarities when it comes to the environment, the uh, social uh, uh, justice, and uh, they are indeed similar. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I thank uh, all uh, our representatives. I thank you for attending this session. May God bless you all. Thank you.